All right, so today I want to talk about persistent storage in the web. Now, in browsers, when we're talking about storage, this is the list of things that we're talking about here. Well, really, this top five. So cookies, web storage with local storage or session storage, the cache API, saving files, maybe you want to use them with a service worker, service workers themselves, and index DB. So those are the five primary ones. File system API, not supported everywhere. It's something, if you're building extensions, you might have access to the file system API to save files. Um, Web SQL and App Cache were part of this list, but both of them have been deprecated and the browsers are slowly removing support for both of those. So really, we're talking about these top five things. If you're creating cookies, if you're creating local storage or session storage, if you're using the Cache API, IndexedDB API, or if you're using service workers, then you are at the mercy of the browser as to how long it wants to hang on to that data. Now, Safari has a stated policy of, you know, if the user doesn't come to this website and they don't touch your data for a week, out it goes. We're throwing it out. It's no, it's apparently it's not important to your user, so we're not going to keep it. Now, other browsers have different limits. Um, Chrome is probably the most liberal with the amount of storage that it lets you have, but there's still limits that can be reached depending on how much file space you have on your system, how much disk space you have. So depending on sort of these factors right here, Chrome is going to decide when it gets close to that limit, how much data are you allowed to keep around and what data is going to be thrown out. So Every origin gets its own space for saving these things. And the amount of data that each of these is allowed to use varies from browser to browser. The amount of storage that each is going to take up will vary from browser to browser, but it's divided up by origin. So right now I'm on localhost 127.0.0.1 port 5500. So that with HTTP, the protocol, that makes up an origin. If I'm on github.io slash professor steve slash something in that repo, well, the github, the professor steve.github.io, that portion, that's the origin. Um, throw the protocol in there as well to make up the origin. But that creates sort of a little storage area or division of data. So within that space, I can save cookies, local storage, cache, data, index DB, service mm -hmm. workers. I'm saving all of it on the user's computer, but the amount of space that's up to me, that's my storage space. Now, if you want to make your data, now you should have a reason for this, but if you want to make your data persistent, meaning you want to tell the browser that, okay, I understand there's going to be circumstances where you're going to delete my data, but I want to hang on to this data. This data is really important. It's crucial to the functioning of my app. So can you please mark this origin as one that should be persisted? So this is persistent storage. And it's actually a pretty simple thing to do. And it's now supported across all the major browsers. So Safari, back to version 15.2. That was the last one to add the support. You can see here, so Chrome, Edge, Safari, Firefox, Opera, they've all got support for this. So the storage manager is the API that we're using. And there's two methods, persist and persisted. These are the two methods that we're going to use here. Now, anytime you're using one of these HTML5 APIs, you should always do some feature detection. So we check to see, OK, in the Navigator object, is there something called storage? If there is, great, then I can proceed. Now, within storage, do you have something called persist or persisted? Both of those are functions. They both were added at the same time. Check for either one. It doesn't matter which. The difference between the two of them is that persisted, this is the one, do you have support? Uh, sorry, not do you have support, but um, has this website been marked as persisted? So we're talking about the origin. So talking about data, we're talking about the origin. So has this origin on this browser been marked as something that should be persisted? And then persist, this is the permissions request. 
All right, so let's check first of all, and we'll we'll try this in uh, Chrome and Safari and in Firefox just to see the way the three of them deal with this slightly differently. So we're going to check so navigator storage dot persisted. So we're going to ask, hey, has this been persisted? Has this origin been marked as something that should be persisted? So we should get a boolean back. It is a promise. And we will get a boolean returned. So my variable here, well, was it? That's going to be a boolean true or false. So I'm just going to log that out. There's my variable. So save, run, and down here in my terminal. There we go. Well, was it is false. Okay, great. So there's uh, Chrome. It's telling me it has not been marked. So let's jump over into Safari. We'll refresh this as well. And there we go. Well, was it is marked as true. So in here, because I've run some code previously where I said this origin is something that I want to persist. There we go. In Safari, this origin is marked as something that should be persisted. So it's a higher level of permission. It's a higher level of priority for the data that's being saved inside of here. And in Firefox, we'll just refresh it and true. So again, I've run code in here where I did mark this origin as persisted. All right, now, if it's false, let's jump back in here. So if it's false, and here we go, back to the original one, I'm gonna ask the permission. So regardless of whether or not it was, I'm gonna prompt, so I'll say, we could check, we could check this, we could say if, well, it was, or, is equal to false, but I'm just going to call the permission because we're just doing a demo here. And again, it's a promise which will return and it's going to return a Boolean as to whether or not we are allowed to do this. So I'll log that out, this Boolean true or false and allowed false. So in Chrome, the browser looked at these things. What is the level of engagement that the user has with this origin? How often are they using it? Are they using the website? Are they visiting it frequently? Were notifications allowed? So at some point for this origin, did you prompt the user for allowing notifications? And did they say yes? Or has the user bookmarked this? Or were they running uh, a PWA here and they've installed it? They've added it to the home screen? So these are all things that Chrome will look at to decide whether or not your website is worth marking as persisted. All right, so we'll jump over into Safari now and allowed, true. So we asked and answered. It was already said as true, so it's gonna tell us true again, but it uses its own um, factors to decide whether or not you're going to allow. So available data space, user engagement, all these things come into play. And in Firefox, this one stands out. They have a slightly different approach where they actually ask the user. So allow this origin to store data in persistent storage. So we'll say, sure, why not allow it? And there we go. We get the Boolean back saying that, yes, it is allowed. So we have granted the permission to this website at this origin to mark the storage and we have marked the storage as persistent. And that's it. That is how you use persistent storage with those two methods, persist and persisted. So if you want a copy of that code, there's a link to the code just down in the description. And as always, thanks for watching.